Get ready for real time, prime time, big time, show time. It's edible honesty time. And in the meantime, get ready for your favorite partner in crime, your host, one of the greatest talkers of all time, the king of edible honesty, the eighth wonder of the world, Andrew the Giant. <laughs> Hey, hey, my, my, hot, rockin', chicken, pot, pie. Let's get down and let's talk about the ins and outs of the food industry. My name is Andrew. I'm your host, and I am ready to rock, so let's cut right into it. Because today, we will be discussing one of the greatest edible American horror stories to ever be told. And so we are clear on this. This is a chronicle about edible horror. And I mean like the tales of the crypt kind of horror and edible reality, meaning this really, really, really happened, phrased another way. This is a disturbing tale about how our U.S. government grotesquely perverted all laws of nature and decency to recreate an entire species just like the OSI did in the Six Million Dollar Man. And the reason that they did it was to fabricate a cheap, mostly edible, protein source. We have the ability to make the world's first line of six million dollar chickens. Now call Seth Green and the team over at Robot Chicken because Foghorn Leghorn will be that chicken. Better than he was before. Bigger. Fatter. Meatier. Tastier, more tender, more desirable than Americans, dare I say it, the world could possibly imagine. And so, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the unlikely, edible ascendancy of the American chicken. Now, it was the great John Winger who once famously asked, why the chicken crossed the road to get to the left and the right, sir? And today, like the soldiers in Stripes the movie did when they were army training, sir, we will step from the left to the right. Today, we will finally answer the question that humans have been asking for thousands of years, or more accurately, at least the last 70 years or so. What came first? The reimagined and re-engineered American created super chicken of 1948? Or the egg. Why did the American chicken cross the road to score some seriously amazing performance enhancing drugs? So pass the beer nuts, Hillary Norman Peterson, and let's talk genetically modified American U.S. government sanctioned chicken. Because I believe, I say I truly believe, if we are actually going to truly solve this ancient folk paradox addressing the problem of origins and first cause of what came first, then let's at least start with discussing the egg. Now, I'm pretty sure that most people are familiar with Jurassic Park the movie. Scary, but well done. And there's a scene in there where the group happens upon a dinosaur egg and Dr. Alan Grant says, oh my God, do you know what this is? This is a dinosaur egg. The dinosaurs are breeding. But in real life, back then, Dr. Alan Grant would have said, oh my God, do you know what this is? This is a dinosaur egg. This is breakfast, bitches. Because back then, there was no American supermarket to shop at 24 hours a day. There was nothing. And gathering up eggs was about the easiest and best meal to acquire back then, period, exclamation mark. So, why did the American chicken cross the road? To get another fix. Now, as humans, we have been consuming, and we have been hooked on eating eggs since literally the dawn of humanity. And that's mainly because eggs were so easy to acquire, relatively speaking, and they have always been quite tasty and quite versatile. 
and an excellent source of protein to get straight to the point. Eggs have been edibly enjoyed by human beings for many millions of years, and there is enough archaeological evidence to demonstrate that eggs were consumed by humans around the globe on a mass scale, regardless of culture and geography, and that a human taste for chicken egg consumption dates all the way back to some three million years ago. But there is zero, zero archaeological evidence to suggest that humans ever ate chickens for their meat, at least not millions of years ago. And as we fast forward through history, millions of years, even in the Neolithic age, some 12,000 years ago, when the Flintstones were our favorite modern Stone Age family, when woolly mammoths were still roaming the earth and actively being hunted by humans for their meat, and of course, when Marco Polo's favorite dish was spaghetti and mastodon meatballs, forget about it. Even back then, in the Stone Age, just some 12,000 years ago, there is plenty of archaeological evidence that humans ate chicken eggs by the dozen. But nothing suggests that humans ever consume chicken meat. So to be clear, the human race has been edibly enjoying chicken eggs for over three million years. But nobody ate chicken for its meat back then because, quite frankly, it was nearly impossible to cook. And it was terribly unsavory, very tough, practically meatless, practically muscleless. And as far as its edible status, why chicken was lower than chopped liver. It simply did not exist. And edibly speaking, that is not good. Yabba dabba do. Now, in the Old Testament, in Leviticus, verse 5, line 7, a guilt offering of two turtle doves or two pigeons is considered acceptable offering to God only and only if the sinner was unable to afford a lamb because the Lord preferred red meat to white. But in no instance anywhere ever in the Old Testament does the Lord ever request a chicken. So why did the American chicken cross the road? Because it was suffering from delusions of paranoia. Or was it? Now, domestication of the chicken occurred over 7,000 years ago. But again, it's always been about egg production, and archaeologists almost unanimously agree that chickens were first domesticated. Again, not for eating, but for one purpose in particular. Chickens were domesticated for the blood sport we call cockfighting. Now, isn't that special? <laughs> So, why did the American chicken cross the road? Because it was very afraid. Now, it is only in the mid-20th century that chicken meat even became a viable, edible option, let alone a preferred, and now America's favorite entree. But with the aid of modern science, and of course a lack of morals, and the large-scale industrialization of factory farming, the American chicken almost overnight became an enormously mass production commodity. So to be quite clear, it was not until the year 1948 that chicken meat made any kind of economic impact in the United States at all. And as far as chicken's nutritional contribution to the American diet, well, it was zero up until the year 1948. I believe it was Dark Helmet who phrased it best when he simply asked, What's the matter, Colonel Sanders? Chicken? So why did the American chicken cross the road? Now seriously, at what point in American history did we have both well-established roads and freely roaming chickens? Gaffigan. So how did the American chicken managed to capture the appetites of and conquer 
not only the American dinner table, but more importantly, the world's? The answer, my friends, may shock you. Now, what happened to the American chicken once the U.S. government got their rat hands around the chicken's neck? In 1948, it scares me so much that I'm not quite certain what would be a safer, edible entree to serve to my family and put on our dinner table. Is it an American chicken more doped up than Jose Canseco himself? Or your average Chinese bat? But before I discuss that, let's talk about how the edible playing field and financial opportunity even open up for the American chicken in the first place. And to do that properly, we need a touch of history and a little bit of knowledge about our cultural obsession with eating birds. So why did the American chicken cross the road? Did the chicken cross the road? Did he cross it with the toad? Yes, the chicken crossed the road, but why he crossed it, I've not been told. Well, just a little over a hundred years ago, long before the chicken started to become a viable, beloved, edible, culinary favorite in America and around the world, the entire world ate and loved eating what the entire planet deemed to be the most delicious and the tastiest bird to ever exist. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the exceptionally delicious and the very extinct Passenger Pigeon. Now, hold your applause, because to me, the Passenger Pigeon is the craziest culinary extinction of all time. And to learn more about culinary extinction. Tune into my podcast, episode two, Culinary Extinction, because this bird, the passenger pigeon, was so vast in number. I mean, this bird was so plentiful. How plentiful was it? The passenger pigeon was so abundant that the actual prospect of seemingly eating the passenger pigeon out of existence was to borrow a phrase simply impossible. And the reason why it seems so simply impossible is because there were literally billions and billions and billions of passenger pigeons flying and rapidly multiplying all over the earth. And I mean billions and billions of passenger pigeons. Now, I'm not certain that anyone can truly understand the mathematics behind wiping out an entire species that numbers in the multiple billions. But suffice to say, it's not good. So when I tell you that a planet full of civilized human beings literally ate billions and billions of passenger pigeons off the planet, and really quite rapidly... And really quite recently, the last passenger pigeon on earth passed away in 1914. And at that point in time, in 1914, people in America, hell, people all around the world, they did not even consider chicken a viable culinary option. The egg, yes, but the bird, no. What am I, chopped liver? Well, that did not happen because back then chicken was difficult to cook and the meat part in the pun was simply foul. Finally, an edible accuracy and at best around the globe chicken status was so far below chopped liver and chicken was only available at that time for people that could actually afford it. 
because chicken back then, due to its rarity, was actually quite expensive. So when, in the wide, wide world of sports taggart, did Americans and the world turn their culinary attention to the chicken? Well, the year was 1948, and Americans, we were just starting to rebuild from the war. So why did the American chicken cross the road? It was hoping to be hit by a car. Now, after the war, after World War II, America started to rebound. And as the United States began to recover and life started to return to normal, and we resurfaced from things like war rationing and items like beef and pork were literally flying off the shelves. Chicken eggs, by comparison, didn't seem to wow Americans as an entree. And although a plenty, chicken's complete lack of taste and muscle and everything else literally canceled out their prospect of becoming the new bird protein the American public was so hungry for. Because people had patriotically reduced their meat eating down to practically zero. They abided by war rationings. And for quite a long time to support the war. And it was well worth it. And now they wanted a reward. People wanted to overindulge. And there was a huge edible economic void and a huge edible niche to be filled and monetized if only someone somehow could find a suitable bird for Americans to eat now that the beloved passenger pigeon was gone. So why did the American chicken cross the road? There are billions and billions and billions of such chickens crossing roads just like this one all across the universe every day. Now, for some proper perspective, the legendary, absolutely delicious passenger pigeon was once the most common source of protein in the United States, period. And I know what you are thinking. There are still billions and billions of other pigeons. Why don't Americans just eat those? Well, once the passenger pigeon was extinct, pigeon or squab, as it is edibly described, immediately began to suffer from, let's just say, horrible, irreversible public relation nightmares, especially around the start of World War I and the once incredibly delicious and once majestic and revered passenger pigeon was almost instantly replaced by the revisionistic images of city pigeons defecating on park benches and city streets and on top of people's heads. And that was it. That spelled the edible demise of the American pigeon. And therein was the opportunity for a new bird species to be grotesquely manipulated and become the world's first dramatic pause factory farmed bird. Holy factory farm bird, Batman. So why did the American chicken cross the road? Its captor had briefly fallen asleep. Holy chicken jokes, Batman. So why did the American chicken cross the road? It can't. So now the stage is all set for a new species of birds to dominate the American protein market 
And it became quite clear that the American public was not going to eat pigeon again. So they're out, and swans are protected. But there are billions and billions of those chickens out there. Isn't there something we can do about that? And that is precisely when some food retailer says, hey, You know what would be amazing? If these billions of chickens could suddenly say double in size and have huge, enormous breasts like turkeys, and that way an entire American family could sit down and eat a chicken just like they eat a turkey. And there it is. There's the blueprint. The USDA and the U.S. government thought this sounded like the best idea ever. So much so that they acted upon it immediately. So why did the American chicken cross the road? He was looking for some humanity. The year was 1948, and Americans were just starting to rebuild from the war years when the U.S. government announced that it wanted to, quote, unquote, improve the lot of the American chicken. Or let me help you translate the government jargon into working English, please. What they were really saying was, we, the U.S. government, want to give the American chicken, let's call them some upgrades, and a few surgical enhancements. You know, we'll call in a few unethical plastic surgeons and Dr. Frankenstein and create a whole new friggin' species. Or to borrow a term from our German friends, Let's create an Uber chicken, if you will. And with that mission statement in mind, in 1948, the U.S. government released its Chicken of Tomorrow competition. I swear that was the actual name, the Chicken of Tomorrow competition. Because I don't have the creativity to make that name up. And the chicken of tomorrow competition aimed at breeding a new species, a super chicken. And it is perfectly fine at this point to think of America's chicken of tomorrow as you would Jack Kirby's Captain America. Captain America is the tale of a frail young man who is significantly enhanced by modern science to the peak of human perfection by an experimental drug. And that about sums it up. This new species by science, this newly created species codenamed Captain Chicken America, Excelsior. So why did the American chicken cross the road? What road? What chicken? Now, this new codename, Captain Chicken America species, believe me when I tell you, this bird was never on the planet before, at least not as God created. No, chickens before the year 1948 were puny, undesirable birds that lack muscle and were only around for eggs. So what exactly do you think came first? The reimagined and re-engineered American-created Super Chicken of 1948 or the egg? 
So, why did the American chicken cross the road? The chicken did not cross the road. The road passed beneath the chicken. Albert Einstein. Now, to answer the question of what came first, the U.S. government had a list of what they wanted to accomplish and achieve with this new species of super chickens. And what the U.S. government and Oscar Goldman of OSI mandated was that the chicken of tomorrow must, and I'm paraphrasing, the chicken must be at least double the size that they are today. They don't care what methods or drugs to genetically modify it are necessary to achieve They just want a chicken with significantly bigger breasts, perverse even, with layers and layers of white meat, just like a turkey breast, and chicken legs for days like Cher. But make sure the thighs are plump, super meaty, Rubenesque. And they want the chicken to taste unlike chicken because chicken taste is unsavory. No. New species, new taste. Make it tasty. And last but not least, we want two chickens for the time it takes for one chicken to reach slaughter weight. And to the winner, we'll go the spoils because we're offering a sizable cash prize. So why did the American chicken cross the road? It didn't want to be a turkey. And there was a cash prize for $5,000 on the line to the winner of the chicken of tomorrow. Now I know what you were thinking. $5,000 does not seem like a sizable cash prize. But at that time, in the year 1948, the average American family took home $3,200 for the entire year. So now, with $5,000 on the line, in the year 1948, every farmer Every mad Nazi scientist living in America, heck, every American citizen is busy submitting their altered or tuned up recipes for creating an uber chicken of tomorrow because they want to win that $5,000. And these chickens of tomorrow, let me tell you, they are so seriously amped up on crazy steroids and all kinds of growth hormones and so much worse to ensure a much, much bigger than nature ever intended or possibly conceived chicken emerges from the laboratory. And that's exactly what happened. So why did the American chicken cross the road? He wanted to live. So the results of these next generation, U.S. government, American chickens of tomorrow, these code name, Captain Chicken Americas of tomorrow, well, with American science technology, and the best performance-enhancing drugs money could buy, these chickens of tomorrow were no longer recognizable to farmers due to their unrecognizably enormous size and the impact that these super chickens had on America. Well, it was beyond anything anyone had ever imagined or anticipated because these surgically enhanced and beyond recognition altered supersized American birds, codenamed Captain Chicken America, 
They appealed to the American public and big time. So why did the American chicken cross the road? It was meeting its dealer. Now, not only were these steroid-infused chickens of tomorrow so much bigger than they were before. I mean, new species, new results. These chickens of tomorrow, they had this new flavorful, irresistible, marvelous, juicier, meatier, more desirable texture like never before. And Americans were beyond pleased with the new government-mandated, genetically modified Captain Chicken America. Especially the sizable, surgically enhanced breasts. And believe me, our government used nothing but the worst to create these new chickens of tomorrow. But the finest plastic surgeons from Beverly Hills were called in, and with a nip here and a tuck there, these ultra-modified chickens of tomorrow became America's favorite protein in a mere 35 years. In fact, the average American now eats over 100 pounds of chicken of tomorrow meat per year. That's 100 pounds of edibly science engineered laboratory created chicken or call the species whatever you need to call it to sleep at night. I call it an edible nightmare. So, why did the American chicken cross the road? Because the U.S. Surgeon General suggested they start smoking. And now, that our collective appetites for U.S. government-created chickens of tomorrow have become even more unfettered and unfeathered and even greater than ever before. The chicken of tomorrow as we know it and the chicken of tomorrow as we love it is truly on the brink of receiving another upgrade as I speak. The U.S. government is about to defy all laws of decency in nature yet again. And perhaps this time, maybe they'll create a chicken that will be ready for slaughter meat in a mere seven days. Now, for perspective, the chicken of tomorrow in 1948 literally was a double in size. And in 1951, the U.S. government had the audacity to hold the same chicken of tomorrow contest again. And just a mere three years later, the chicken got even bigger and more and more unnatural. Why, by the time we get to 1957, the average chicken has ballooned once again. And now, the growth period for a chicken that the American public is going to eat to reach slaughter weight is just a mere 63 days. Now, throw in a few more upgrades and one or two more decades. And by the 90s, by 1990, the number of growth days that it takes for a chicken, which the American public will now eat, has been magically reduced to a mere 38 days. And once again, that chicken has gotten magically bigger. So fat and big, in fact, 
that these chickens cannot even actually walk, nor can they even flap their wings. Oh, and they're achieving these record sizes on half the feed it took to feed the chickens in 1948. These chickens have literally been turned into synthetic cash cows that live their entire existence. And I mean their entire existence, literally sitting in their own feces, just waiting to die, chronically depressed. And if you think about it, the American public, right around World War I, we ostracized free-range pigeons just because we saw them poop. So what are we eating? Well, in a nutshell, I would say American chicken is simply an edible version of Satan's spawn. Now, isn't that special? So, that's it. That's a wrap on what came first. The U.S. government created chicken of 1948, or the egg. But tune in next time when we discuss the future of soul food. And I sit down with the king, no, the doctor of soul food, the legendary, the incomparable Dr. J, and we discuss his empire Celebrities Soul Food. You can find them at CelebritySoulFood.com. See you next time. My name is Andrew. I thank you so much for listening. And to all my fans, to all my fans in the United Kingdom, God save the Queen. And a huge edible shout out to Matt Damon, who probably does not like American chicken anymore. And I've been getting all your emails and your comments, and thank you. And don't forget to give Edible Honesty a five-star rating on iTunes and Apple Podcast and Google Podcast and iHeartRadio and wherever you listen it to. And no... I am not signed by any media outlet yet. And CNN and Food Network and Cooking Channel and Martha Stewart and ABC and Comedy Central and whoever else, I'm available. So get in contact with me and let's work out a deal and let's get edible, honesty, what it deserves, a syndicated platform. So get ready to tune in next episode for more edible Honesty, same edible time, same edible station.